What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today we're coming in with an absolute hoot and a holler. A special edition Christmas hoot brought to you by St. Nicholas himself. Now, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Drop a like if you do. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope you guys are all having a wonderful holiday season. Without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Now in today's video, we're talking about a very fun day of mine. A story that I've been sitting on for a while because, you see, this story took place during the summer of 2019. Towards the end of it, though. It might have even been the beginning of fall, some may argue. But at this point, I was already kind of wrapping up the creation of the Coke Chronicle series, and this happened too late for me to really fit it into that series of stories. For those of you guys who are new to the channel, I did a series in 2019 about my coke addiction called coke chronicles i highly suggest you go watch it because i was a fiend and i was also geeked in half of those videos so at this point in my life, I was still a raging coke addict and also taking a fair amount of molly and pretty much any other drug on the side also, on top of that, my friend group had recently gone through quite a change. Some of you guys who are OGs on the channel might remember when I had a problem with a friend of mine named Tim. This was right after that happened, so this kind of shook up everything. You know, I was kicking it with a lot of new people, you know, seeing a lot of new faces and hanging out with old friends that I hadn't seen in a while. I was doing drugs with pretty much anybody who was down. Now, on this particular day, I linked up with Michael, who was a frequent character in a lot of my older high school stories, but after high school, we really didn't see each other much. I mean, I think I can count the amount of times I've seen him since my, like, technically end of senior year because I dropped out. So since the, you know, at like middle of 2017, probably with my fingers, you know, it hasn't been very much. And the reason for that is because Michael moved. He moved not super far away, but about an hour away. Far enough away where it's kind of tedious, you know, and also he never wanted to drive out because he's a lazy bastard and he's too fucked up to drive all the time. And I was also a lazy bastard and also too fucked up to drive more often than not. So it was not really a good combo. You know, the distance was not great. But I had hit up Michael on this fateful day because he had posted on his story saying that he was serving a little bit of weed. And I'm not going to lie, the weed looked really good. So I hit him up and I was like, yo, bro, like, come through, you know, like, what you doing, let me get some of that, and he's like, bet, dude, like, I just got a new car, I'll fucking, I'll pull up soon, dude, like, hell yeah, let's get it, so, I send him the address, because I had recently moved into my mom's new place, she had switched houses in 2016, and we hadn't really been hanging out very much since then, you know, since I got out of rehab, so, he wasn't really familiar with the new spot, so, I sent him the address, and maybe an hour goes by, you know, it was early in the afternoon, maybe like 1 o'clock, maybe a little before that at this point, and Michael pulls up. Now, I was super excited to see this guy. Me and Michael used to do hella acid together. We used to smoke a ton of blunts in this dude's room. His mom would come home and yell at us about it. Like, it was great. I've been yelled at by a lot of my friend's parents. I don't know why. Like, a lot of my friend's parents don't like me, dude. I think it's because they have ring cameras and shit. Or they just have, like, security systems in the house. And they just see me bring drugs around. I don't know what the deal is, bro. Because I'm a very I'm a very friendly young man, okay? I come in, hello, ma'am, how you doing? You have, There's a beautiful home, you know? Thanks for having me. I'm a very friendly man. I just, I drug their, their children. And that's why the parents hate me. I, I, that's gonna sound so bad. Someone's gonna clip that out of context and put it on TikTok or something, dude. That's gonna sound so bad. All right, either way. So Michael pulls up, and I dap him up, and we have a seat in my little downstairs area, and we're just chatting it up immediately. You know, I had seen him a few times, like, fairly recently. It's not like he was a total stranger to me at this point, but also, you know, we didn't see each other very frequently, and this guy was always doing some new shit. So he pulls up, and he busts out some weed that he brought with him, and it was the shit from his story, and oh my god. Now, I didn't realize Michael had picked up this hobby, but he actually started growing. In his free time, he was telling me that since he moved, he had more space in his new place, and he started growing some za. And he showed me some pictures, and he had a pretty serious setup. Like, he really looked like he knew what he was doing, so... I was impressed. He busts open this Ziploc, and there is just some beautiful, bright, fluffy, green, beautiful, gorgeous nugs. It's got that certain shade of green where it was like, it wasn't dark. It was like a lime green, almost a little brighter, you know, like if you mixed green with white, 
a little bit, you know? I, does that even make sense? I don't know any of the color mixes. I was really bad in art class, but either way, just, it, it was beautiful, dude, and the contrast between the little orange hairs, the pistols on it, and the, the nugs themselves, it was just gorgeous. This weed was crazy, and at the time, I believe I would rank this in probably the top five most beautiful weeds I'd ever seen. The best bag appeal, you know, just gorgeous. So I was amazed. I was like, bro, what fucking strain is this? And he tells me it's some Gorilla Glue. Now, normally, I had never seen some Gorilla Glue that looked this vibrant and bright, you know? So I was kind of thrown off because usually, listen, this was 2019, all right? So this is before legal weed, and also the black market here in Illinois was not really very popping yet, and on top of that, I didn't really have the connections in the black market in Illinois, right? I was still going to my old fucking high school plugs, you know? So I was sitting there, and I'm just like, wow, this is some crazy fucking zod, dude, this is nuts. Let's smoke up, you know? So he starts rolling up a joint. This guy always stayed with the papers. He was a master joint roller. I mean, an absolute beast. He could do blunts too, but joints were really, really his art, you know? This, this guy was great at it. I was lucky to have a lot of friends in my group of smokers who, you know, they, they were much better at rolling joints than I was, so I never really had to worry about it. I personally cannot roll a joint for shit. If you put six guns to my head and said you were going to blow my brains out from every direction if I couldn't twist up or impurl a joint, my brains would be on the wall immediately because I would just give up. I'd have to reach for one of the guns and try to fight for my freedom. I'd have to fight for the gun and grab it and then try to shoot the other five people and that's just not happening. So I'd be screwed. So while he's rolling up the joint, I figure that it's my turn now to offer some goodies to him. So I bust out my baggie of blow, and I bust out my little tiny baggie of molly that I had just a pinch of it left. I didn't quite have enough of it for me, for both of us to roll. I had enough for maybe me to roll, but definitely not both of us. I would say I had like a, like a 0.2 to a, a 0.25, but also I had a tolerance at this point. So a 0.1 wasn't really going to do much for me. I needed at least like a 0.15 and maybe a 0.2 to really lock it in. But I bust out these baggies and I show them to Michael and he's like, damn, bro. I haven't done some coke in a while. Low-key, I, I feel like I might have made this man relapse looking back at it. But at the time, I took that as great news. I was like, wonderful, dude. Let's let's go ahead and do it, you know? So I immediately flip my phone over. I pour out a little bit of blow. I've got the molly on the table. And I ask him, I'm like, yo, you know, you want to do some molly and coke lines? And he's like, no, nah, you know, like... I'm probably just going to do the coke. I'm kind of good on the molly. And I, I'm asking him, I'm like, why? You know, like, what's what's wrong with the molly? And he's like, dude, my serotonin's all fucked up. I used to take too much, you know, like, because this guy, listen, this guy used to roll a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Like, when I say we did psychedelics a lot together, it, it was not a thing of, like, I would hit him up and we'd both not be tripping and we would agree to, like, link up and dose together a lot of the time I would hit this dude up and it was either his idea or he was already tripping you know Th this guy literally would eat tabs like every day he would roll like three times a week so I I totally believed him on this one I was like yeah that makes sense you know it's probably better that you just stick to the blow you know that's a statement I never thought I'd be saying but either way so we chop up these lines and I add a little bit of molly into mine and I'm getting excited you know I'm like hey now I actually do have enough for me to roll, you know, like he declined it, we're good to go, you know, we're all chilling, so I'm getting hype, I chop us up some fat lines, I chopped up probably like four or five lines, you know, and the, the strategy that I have, because listen, the phone... I don't like doing it long ways, okay? I think long ways, it's too much pressure. You, you got to inhale for too long. You know what? Do, do it the, the wide way. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, instead of making the lines long, do it the other way and just make them fat. That's what I like to do, a short little chubby line. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful, a chode line. It's fantastic. It's the most efficient way to do your lines. So... I'm making my little chode lines up on the phone, and I, I get them there. That was a strat I had developed after a while, you see. I was getting tired of doing long lines, and I was like, no, we're going max efficiency. Just make a little mound. 
So half of the lines had some molly in it, and half of them didn't, and I offer him his lines first. He had finished up the joint at this point, so he takes a couple of these lines, and I take a couple of mine with the molly in them, and oh my god, the taste of a Coke and molly line is something that I don't even know if I can put words to, because molly already tastes absolutely disgusting. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but the only thing I think that tastes worse is Xanax, because Xanax literally will make me throw up from the taste. Molly doesn't quite get me to that point. But the mixture of cocaine and molly, which are two substances that do not taste good, is absolutely rancid. It is vile. The only saving grace is that after a couple minutes, the coke starts to kind of numb out your throat, and then you don't really notice it anymore. That's the only positive thing I have to say. Don't do coke and molly lines. Honestly, I don't know what kind of damage they did to my nose, but it's feeling pretty soft nowadays. So we take these lines, and I'm getting geeked up, and man, I'm having a good time. This wasn't my first bit of blow for the day. It's not like I had woken up and was fiending. I mean, I was already sitting at the crib for a couple hours awake just doing some bumps, you know, chilling out, gumming some shit. But this was just a continuation of the party, and now we're adding Molly to the mix. Now, I'm not a scientist, but I think it's safe for me to tell you that this is awful for your heart. Don't do this, all right? But moving on. So I'm doing my Molly and Coke lines, and Michael's doing his lines, and we're chilling out, and we start talking about cars a little bit. Now, this is where our day really got rolling. You see, there was a lot to talk about in the car world at this point. I don't consider myself a crazy car guy, but when the Super came out, everyone gave a fuck about that. I mean, even people who weren't car people... Everyone gave a fuck about the Supra coming out, you know? Everyone was like, oh shit, it's coming back. And this was 2019, guys. You gotta remember. So this was like right when it came back. So it was still fresh. It was hype. We're talking about it, and Michael's like, damn, bro, like, you know, I, I wish they made it in stick, dude. Like, I, I want to drive that shit, you know? I don't even know how to drive stick. So I was like, nah, you know, I, hey, I don't really mind that they didn't do a stick one. I, I, I think it's A-OK. -okay. So we're sitting there talking about the Supra, and I throw out the idea. I'm like, what if we go test drive one? You know, like, what if, what if we just go fucking try it? And Michael's like, you know what? That's not a half bad idea. Like, let's just go to the dealership. So we chop up some more lines. I had some more Molly into mind, and I'm feeling fantastic. My face is numb. The drip is going. But the weird thing for me is even though I was combining a lot of these drugs and, and doing a crazy amount on paper... They didn't really, at least towards this point, when it was kind of towards the end of that summer and it, I was really, really active doing the most coke I'd ever done day to day, it didn't really fuck me up like it used to. It more so just made me feel normal, maybe maybe slightly elevated, you know? It, it was pretty bad, you know? Like, normally in these videos, I talk a lot about the effects and I describe how I felt, but in all honesty... There's not a crazy amount to describe here. I definitely felt the molly, you know, I, I was feeling good, I was rolling, I didn't have any visuals, but I was vibing pretty hard, but the coke, it wasn't really doing much for me besides the numbing, you know, I, I think it was an all mental thing, and typically, like, if me, if I today went and did as many molly and coke lines as I did on this day... I would be off my rocker right now. I'd probably learn a new language, dude. I'd probably just start speaking Mandarin or some shit. I'd be off my rocker, boys. So we do our next batch of lines, and we've still got this joint. So after these lines, we head out to the garage and spark up the joint. And the joint was perfect. It was wonderful. I don't know why, because when you're coked up, it is such a waste to smoke weed. You're wasting the weed and the coke. But I just, I loved the act of smoking. I would take the fattest rips ever off the coke because my throat was numb i don't feel it my throat doesn't hurt give me more smoke you know what i'm saying so we were just puffing this shit just chiefing it and after we finish up this joint we hop in my car and drive up the block to the toyota dealership luckily i lived pretty close to one if you guys remember my videos i used to work at a lexus dealership and there was this kind of big strip of dealerships and the lexus dealership was fairly close to my old house and also next to that Lexus dealership was Toyota. So we cruise on over to Toyota and we hop out the whip. And listen, just picture this, all right? 
I'm sitting there. I'm literally in my pajamas. Michael is in, like, sweats. We drove my car there. His car was nicer than mine, but I wouldn't say by much. But I drove, at the time, a 1994 Cadillac DeVille. It was purple. It was, tech like, it looked dark red, but the technical color on the title was a purple. So I just, I, I like to say it's purple because I feel like that sounds more like a pimp mobile, you know? But either way, I pull up in my purple 1994 Cadillac DeVille, and I hop out in my pajamas. And I walk into this dealership with maybe $300 in my bank account, and the only thing on my mind is test driving a brand new Toyota Supra. Now think about what is wrong with that, all right? Now, we didn't quite realize just how in demand these Supras were. We thought we could just walk into the dealership and fucking ask for one. We didn't really understand that these things were on back order everywhere, you know? So we walk into the dealership. No one even pays attention to us, okay? This is what I hate about car dealerships. You have to dress up like a dickhead or else they won't even approach you. Just because I'm wearing pajamas doesn't mean I don't have money. If you look at my pupils, you would actually see why I don't have any money. But they would never look that closely at me because I looked homeless at the time. So we're looking around and they actually have a Supra in the display room. Brand new. It was beautiful, boys. It was sexy. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I don't really like how it looks in pictures, but in person, I think the new Supra is actually pretty fly, you know? I know there's a lot of controversial opinions on it, but I think it's a cool car. So either way, we're looking at it and there's a salesman who's like kind of near us but not approaching us. So I flag him down. I'm like, hey, bro, you know, like, come over here, you know, like, what's good, I kind of wave him over, and he comes over, and he's like, hi, you know, like, how can I help you guys, and I'm just like, oh, you know, like, we're interested in a Supra, like, we want to, we want to test drive one, see what it's like, this guy, you could tell immediately he's reluctant, he is not giving us the keys to shit in this dealership, dude, he's like, okay, well, you know, let's, uh, let's sit down and talk about it first, like, come with me, we'll, we'll sit at my desk, so he leads us over to his little desk, you know, and he sits us both down, and Dude, it, we must have looked like a gay couple in there, all right? Two dudes off the Coke and the Molly walk into the dealership, and they're trying to buy a Supra together, okay? I mean, we must have looked like the fruitiest gents in that bitch, all right? But we weren't, all right? We were just there to whip that shit. So we sit down with him, and he asks, he's like, so, you know, he starts doing the initial questions. He's like, okay, so, you know, are, are you trading in anything? Like, do you have a down payment prepared? Uh, do you currently have insurance? Like, a asking basic questions. I think he was trying to vet us, you know? Like, I think he was trying to ask, like, what, what we really had without directly just saying, like, yo, can you afford it or not, you know? He's trying to ask what car we got. He's asking about our down payment. And I recently went and bought a car, and they asked about none of that shit. They let me drive it first but granted I had actual pants on and an actual shirt so that might have helped now as we're sitting there I'm starting to sweat balls I don't know if it's because it was hot in the dealership or it was the combination of stimulants pulsing through my veins but I was sweating balls bullets and I think this guy picked up on that because we kept making really weird eye contact like it, it was very unusual I I don't know if it's because I was just staring at him for too long or what but he just kept like looking over at me from the other end of the desk in like a menacing manner and I wasn't liking it I'm starting to sweat but I'm not nervous but he probably thought I was so this guy's in his head probably like yo this little fucking tweaker is probably gonna try to steal the whip you know like we, we can't let him drive this so he's like, okay, you know, like, you want to test drive it? I just need to see a copy of your licenses, like, both you guys. So we bust out our licenses, and I hand it over to him. And the first thing he says is he's like, oh, like, you guys are young. And oh, my, oh, my, ladies and gentlemen, that's when I knew, that's when I officially knew that we were not getting the keys. No one makes a comment like that, all right? No no one says shit like that if they're trying to sell you anything, okay? They're, they're not going to comment on your age, all right? They're just going to ask about the money, all right? They want the money. Now, after making that comment, we handed him the IDs. We expected him to just get up and go, you know, get us the keys, but that's not what happened. He has more questions. He's like, so what do you guys do for a living? Now, I'm unemployed. I can't tell him I make YouTube videos for a living for two reasons. One, I was making like three figures a month at this point, all right? That is in the hundreds. And two, all my videos are about hard drugs. He's not letting us drive shit. I'm a walking DUI, all right? So I'm sitting there and I'm like, fuck, you know, like, what, what do I tell him? And I'm trying to think on my feet. So I just tell him I work at the Lexus dealership. I just pull, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I work at the Lexus dealership up there. Now... I'm kind of an idiot for saying that, 
because the Lexus and Toyota dealership in my area were owned by the same people, and I just kind of forgot about that. So they could easily just like go in their system and look me up. When I was doing cashier and reception stuff at the Lexus dealership, there was a lot of times where I would have to look up certain salespeople, and they would have these little like details in their little portfolios about the sales they'd done. I have to pull up records, and I could see the Toyota ones as well. I could see every employee they had in that bitch, even service employees and their records. So they could find out very quickly that I did not work there anymore. But nevertheless, I stuck with it. And Michael just said he was self-employed. He didn't elaborate whatsoever. So the dude gets up and he kind of walks away. And I'd imagine he's probably just wasting time and back before he's going to come back and tell us that we're not driving shit. So he gets up and he walks away. And honestly, I expected him to just say there's no Supras to test drive, but he didn't. So I don't know if there actually was or like what the deal was or like maybe if he was asking his manager like, hey, should I call the cops? This dude's sweating bullets and their pupils are big. But as I'm sitting there waiting for this guy to come back, the molly kind of started to slap a little bit, dude. I was really feeling good, you know? I, I started to cool down a little bit and kind of mellow out. And I think that sweating thing is really just the first, like, when that molly really hits you in the face, you know? Because I did the lines right before we smoked that joint and left. But I was starting to actually feel the vibes come in, you know? I was really starting to feel good. Like, it was, it was hitting for sure now. The come up was over. So I'm talking to Michael and I'm like, yo, Oh, like you think we're gonna drive this thing and he's like yeah you hope like he took our licenses you know I hope so and he did take our licenses with him which was a good sign so we're sitting there and he comes back out maybe like 10 minutes later and I am fucking oh my god honestly I don't think I should have been the behind the wheel of that car because in my current mental state I would have been driving like 150 miles an hour I would have found out where the speed limiter was set I mean I swear to god the only thing I could think of was fast car all right I'm driving a boat for a vehicle day to day all right and it's fucking 20 it's it was born before me okay so listen i was very excited to get behind the wheel of this thing and he comes back and he's like yeah you know sorry guys we we don't have any supras but you know if there's anything else you want to take a look at like i i could show you around but we just we can't do test drives right now but you can look at stuff and the test drive comment threw me off i'm like what do you mean like you just said you could show me other shit but then you're saying you we can't do test drives. And I'm like, what? Like, first off, I don't want to drive a Toyota Camry, all right? That's boring, all right? I could go hit up my grandmother and do that. Two, they're definitely just profiling us because we look like tweakers, all right? And that's fine. I don't blame them. You know, now that I think about it, the parking lot was placed right in front of the front entrance with all the glass windows. So they probably profile you when you park. They probably look at what car you drove there. And mine was not a very good one to be profiled in. So after he said there was no test drives, we, we kind of just said thanks anyways and got up and left. You know, there was there was no more business there. We made our attempt. So we dipped out and we cruised back to my house, which was like five minutes down the block and got back home and went on a rampage. We got way more fucked up and we started trying to theorize if we could do it at a different dealership because it felt like we got so close. We were trying to think like, yo, what are some other sick cars we could go drive? Like, let's go drive some AMGs, bro. Let's go to BMW. Let's go drive some M's, you know, like. Let, let's just whip everything, you know, let's go to the fucking, let, let's drive up to Chicago, you know, go closer to Chicago, I think there's one in Northbrook, a Bentley dealership, let's go whip a Bentley, they probably wouldn't even let us walk in that bitch, but either way, we were just sitting there getting geeked out of our minds, and trying to come up with a new plan, a new way to finesse our way into a nice car, even just for 10 minutes, you know, now that I think about it, our plan was flawed from the beginning because the Toyota Supra is a two-seater and the salesperson has to come with two. Uh, I, I don't think that would have worked, actually, but I, listen, we didn't think very far ahead. So either way, we get back to my spot and I'm going on a rampage with the Coke and Molly lines. Before I realized it, a couple hours had gone by of me and Michael just chilling and chatting about cars and watching some random shit on the TV and I had done all of my fucking Molly. I had probably like a point two left and it was just gone. But I wasn't full on rolling, you know, my jaw wasn't locked, I, I wasn't really fiending to bump some music, like, the vibes were definitely flowing and I was feeling it, but I wasn't full on rolling, which was an unfortunate side effect of my drug rampage of 2019. Towards the end, shit just kind of stopped hitting, you know, like, it it really did, and that that's one of the most unfortunate parts of drug addiction, dude. You get to a point 
where you stop getting as high as you want to be eventually. With, with most drugs, pretty much any drug, you get to that point, right? Except for fentanyl, because if you, if you really go overboard, you're just going to fucking die, all right? But every other drug, yeah, you know, you kind of get to a point where it stops hitting like it used to, you know? So, hey, if there's anything to learn from this video, don't do coke and molly lines. Don't do coke or molly lines either. Yeah, hey, just don't do coke and molly, period. But... Listen, the rest of the night, we just spent chilling out, vibing, getting geeked up. Michael kicked it with me for like six hours, bro. We didn't even hit up anyone else. It was just reconnecting like old times, man. It was a good time. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. Man, honestly, th this was a fun one to tell because I forgot about this until recently, dude. When I was at the dealership recently picking up my new car and... I, I just, I had, like, one of those Jimmy Neutron brain blast moments where I was talking to my girl about, like, going to the dealership and how I used to work at the dealership, and I was like, oh, my God, the Supra. Holy fuck. Either way, I don't know. I'm in a good mood today. I'm rambling too much. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, gamers.